on? Is it good? Is it chapstick? Is it what kind? Aqua four. That's the Ooh, expensive that's stuff. Good. That's good I'm a, stuff. I'm a Burt's Bees type of guy, you know? Burt's Bees. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, it's so minty, so fresh, and so clean, clean. All right, welcome to high school ministry. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, yeah. Billy yeah. the Kid, aka Buchanan's newest ASB president, day. right there, baby. Let's all give Billy a salute. Also, my voice just cracked. Yeah, <laughs> it's for that? you. Did you hear that? I was talking to those guys about having a deep voice, and I don't. Oh, President. Have all right, everyone, salute Billy. Everyone, salute Should we Billy. Say the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's no. That's we're not gonna give him the Pledge of Allegiance. We're gonna sing the Star okay, Spangled no. Banner. Oh, say can Billy see? Okay, moving on. Bye, uh, Billy. Hope you find your dad. Bye, Billy. We love you. The impeachment starts now. All right, we're going to play a game because we love to play games. Who loves to play games? Woo! Well, guess what? This game is not good. <laughs> Whoa, dude. We did just like, we did just well, slander the here's, game. Here's the All reality. Right. Here's the reality. I need you guys to go in with like a sober mindset of how this game is so that you just like, you know, you really, you got to just think outside the box a little bit, okay? Think so. outside the box. Who is watching the college basketball games that have been taking place for the last few weeks? All right, we're down to like the Elite Eight, Final Four. I think there's some games today. Well, we're going to play a game called Emoji Sociology. What's it called? Emoji Madness. phraseology, yeah, yeah, Madness yeah, Madness yeah. edition. Madness edition, as in March Madness, which is what sport? Basketball. So all of these emojis are going to spill out, spell out, not spill out. Ooh, yikes. Ooh, yikes. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. No. It's going to spell out basketball-related phrases. Basketball-related phrases. So... What I need you to do is if you know what it is, basketball guy, all right? If you know what it is, <laughs> you need to scream the phrase out loud because there's only two of us. And if you're in the back and you're saying, hey, yeah, 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 I'm not going to be able to hear you. So if you know the answer or if you think you know the answer, just scream at me. Scream at Rachel. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. For March Madness emoji And it's going to be great. What? You have diabetes. Can you, you eat ice cream? You can go get ice cream. Is, has your blood sugar? Is it low? Is it low? Okay, well, I can run to the frat house and get you some soft serve if you want. If you guys win. All right. How if about, you win, Josh gets soft we, serve. Let's, let's play the first round. All right, we're going to play. Here's the first one. It's actually the easiest one. Sp oh, Space I heard it. Okay, Adam, that's a point. But you need to scream because I hardly heard you. I need to hear you like right? ten times and louder. And you're the closest one to Space me. Space Jam. All right. Good job. So are we gonna just go like guys, girls? I guess. Yeah. All why right. not? Because girls are definitely better than boys. So. It's and the 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 junior high ladies beat the junior high guys. I was devastated. It wasn't so even close. So we're going two two for O on the girls. Okay. All right. One girls? zero. Here we go. Next slide. Next slide. Airball. Air ball. See, see how he yelled it, kind of? It needs to be a little louder. Yeah, All a right? little, lot louder. Just All pretend, right, girls, come on. I believe you in you. Are we, going all right, to you got to yell at your friend. I need to hear you. I need, scream. like, a direct, like, all right, right here in my zero. ear. As soon as there, here's the next slide. What I'll is it? I'll bend my ear towards you. Offense. Offense. Three zero. Gentlemen, I haven't heard one thing from you, basketball guy. All right? You should know these. You play basketball. I see it on Instagram all day. All he does is just get threes. All right. Three, zero. Here we, Here we go. go. Next one. Here we go. I, I think it. I think it's. All right. We're just going to go with guys in general because I heard you. Also, if you said March Madness, that is not correct. That was all right. two points. March Madness. All right. Four, zero. Oof. All right. It's this tough. next one is. If the girls get it, it's worth four points. If okay, the boys fine. get it, it's okay. worth one. All right, whatever. Okay. <laughs> They're not going to get it. All right. You're not, stop clapping. You're not going to get Come it. Come on, guys. Wait, I forgot. What is it? I don't remember. 
It's not two-pointer. I do know that. It's oh, not two-pointer. Okay. This one is so dumb. It's not tip-off. Calm down, okay? It's not tip -off. Where's there a tip-off in that? Where's there a tip-off? Okay, you need to calm down. I'm Keep going. All right, girls, come on. Oh! What? Paige, I cheer needed point? you! What the heck I is cheer you point? I needed you for this one! Uh, Did someone was, say it? I, yes. Uh, I just, I I just heard, like, pulled I heard a hamstring. both guys and girls say it. I uh, don't know who said it first. All right, it's a tie. No one gets points. Okay, fine. It's cheerleading. That's, That's the dumbest emoji I've seen. Did you say it? All right, it's four to four. All right. Four to four. Four to four. You heard it here first. Cheerlead. All right. Here we go. All right, it's four to four. I heard Holly. I heard Holly. All right, it's five to four. Next one, next one. Thank you. No. 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 Mascot. Mascot. Six to four. Who said it? Who said it? Uh, Angie. Yes. Angie. Give all right, this one's Woo. worth three. This one's worth three. Winner take all. It's six to four, ladies, because you get double points for all this stupid stuff. I think this is the one that none of us stuff. got. All right, yeah. here we go. <sighs> this one is so lame. If a no. 16 seed beats a one seed. Upset, what's... You're close. Uh, they, they said it. Upset alert. Upset alert. Good job, Becky. My All right, the girls. ladies win. Woo! The ladies win. Victory! Whatever. All right, we got some announcements, babe. What is happening here in Cross City High All right, School first Ministry? First one. First one. If it is your first time here, we are super glad that you are here. If you have not gone to our guest central desk and filled out a connection card and gotten Dance. a frap house card. What? Uh, just keep going. I'm going to keep going. Uh, please make sure you do that at the end of service so that we can get you a gift. I don't know what is happening with you right now. I'm, I'm good. Passing next, next announcement. What is it? Ah, serving at is. Easter. Yes. So in two weekends, we do not have service in here because it is Easter weekend. Notice the weekend because we have Saturday night service. And what we are asking all of y'all beautiful people and small group leaders is to scan that QR code and sign up to serve during an Easter weekend service. So it would make a lot of sense if you go talk to your family and say, hey, what service are we attending? And if they say, man, we're going to go to Saturday at 4, then maybe you serve at 6. And if they say, we're going to go to the Saturday at 6, maybe you serve Saturday at 4 and vice versa. So figure it out, schedule with your families, encourage them to maybe serve. We need help in our kids' and children's ministries. So if you guys could do that, that would be amazing. What's next? Next announcement is, I'm going to talk about camp. Oh, small groups. No, 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 small groups. Okay, I'll talk about small groups. That's fine. Small groups. Uh, this Wednesday and every single Wednesday until probably the end of time, we have small groups here on our campus. Yes, El Presidente setting the mood over here. 6.30 to 8.30, this arm, uh, here in this building, we have worship, message, and small groups. You don't want to miss it. It is a hoot and a half. And last kind of announcement is we are going to summer camp this woo, year. Woo, woo. Are you going? Yeah, he's going. All right. He's so going. summer camp CIY at Biola University. It's an amazing college campus. It's an amazing camp. We're going to Knott's Berry Farm one day. We're going to Huntington Beach one day. It's going to be tight. All right. Don't miss it. And maybe something happens excitingly in Tahone Ranch this time, because it definitely happened last time we went there. But here's the deal. I'm going to invite these lovely people onto the stage. Woo! Give them a round of applause. Yes. Just keep it. 
Don't trip. Come on. Don't trip. Down. Don't trip. And so you might be thinking, why is there a gang of people in matching black shirts on the stage? Woo. Well, Woo. yes. What's happening? What's happening is that uh, we are actually taking a missions trip to Mexico. We leave next Saturday. Yes. Yes. And so uh, if you went to the main service last night or first service, uh, Pastor Nick, our missions pastor, he kind of prayed for him. But I kind of wanted just to do the same thing. I wanted you guys to see them as well. Um, this is a trip that is open and available to high school students. So next year for spring break, if you're interested, uh, just keep that in the back of your mind. It, it's going to be great, I think. I didn't go last year because Judah was too young. But I'm going this year, and we have a great team, and I'm excited. And if you guys want to go next year, just start thinking about it now. So I'm going to pray for them, for our worship set, and for our message, kind of all three in one prayer. So if you guys don't mind just praying with me and just asking that God would cover our trip. Father God, uh, we just love you so much. We thank you so much. And I just thank you for each and every one of these students and their parents and other staff members who are going on this Mexico trip, Lord. I just pray that you would um, keep us safe during our, our time traveling, whether that's through an airplane or through a bus, God. But just uh, understanding that um, we serve you and it's not about us. We're not going for our own glory, our own satisfaction. But we're going to serve you and to love on these people who just need some love, God. And so I just am thankful for this team, and uh, we're thankful for you and all that you do, Lord. And so we just pray uh, as well today for our, our set that's about to take place and for our message that we're, we will hear in a few minutes, God. So just be with us today, and as we go about our spring breaks, whether it's here in the States or on a missions trip, God, be with us. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all can stand, and we're going to sing. Thank you. Alrighty, good morning, you guys. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> so glad you guys are here. We're going to get started with some worship and worshiping our God. <laughs> Jesus, there's nothing. 
other words, we're going to sing this name. His name that shakes the mountains off. The only word that breaks the curses off. I'll say no other name. 
hands up. The reign of darkness now is ended in the kingdom of light. In the kingdom of light, forever under your dominion, you're the king of my life, you're the king of my life. You reign above it all, you reign above it all. God, we just thank you so much for this space and for this time where we get to just worship you, God, in spirit and in truth. I pray that our hearts will be in the right posture, God, that our sole purpose in being here would be to learn more about you in order to glorify you better, God. During this message, give us hearts open to whatever you have to tell us today, God. May we not be distracted. May we just be fully seeking after what your word has to tell us. And we just thank you once again for this place, for these people that are next to us, God, for just this time. In your name we pray. Amen.
Hey, all right, all right. What's up? Wow, what a difference from junior high to high school. Thank you, guys. Oh, my goodness. I feel like I've just come home. Oh, that was so nice. Thank you, Billy. I know you were the loudest. <laughs> He's the president, guys. Come on, what are you going to do? You have to support him. Okay, thanks, Billy. That's enough. All right, so what's up, guys? Um, who, hey, who's excited for spring break? <laughs> yes, awesome. Spring break, the sun is out. I am happy. I hate the rain. I wish that Rossetti was here and I could make a joke about Seattle, but I can't stand the rain, but the sun is out, so God is good. Spring break is coming. You guys, I'm excited. I bet your parents probably are not, um, but that's okay. That's okay. You'll get it someday. So when I was your age, spring break was kind of, I don't know what you guys say, like mid, right? It was kind of mid. Because, listen, I was stuck at home because there was always a baseball tournament or a football tournament or something, not football, but like baseball or like some sort of event that like kept me here. Is anyone else stuck here this spring break? Nobody? Is anyone else traveling during spring break? I'm going. I'm traveling. But when I was in high school, I didn't get to go very many places during spring break. So like I said, my name is Josh. Um, I'm blessed to be here, man. I'm a small group leader for my junior boys back there. Thank you. Thank you. Dustin's back there. We all love Dustin. Hey, Dustin. If you guys want to just swap and have Dustin come up here, like we can make that happen. I'm sure he can nail this thing. Who said? I'm not even mad about it. I'm not even mad about it. I would probably really like that. So um, anyways, I've been doing this for about a year. Uh, it's been quite a ride. Uh, this is my first time speaking on this stage, potentially my last. Uh, we're going to see how this goes uh, over the next 20 to 23 minutes. And... Um, yeah, hopefully it's not just a one of one. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to dive into the message. So thank you, God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to be up here on this stage preaching to these guys. I want to thank Scott, Zach, Keaton, Lord, and just thank you for, for blessing us with an opportunity to, to reach out to the youth and to give this message. Whoever needs this message today, I pray that they hear it, Father. I pray that it sinks in. Um, and it is through you that all good things are done. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So we have been in a series about friendships. Now, Justin gave a great sermon on how to be a good friend, and that was awesome. Side note, he did some super good impressions. You're not going to get any of that today. There is no impressions. This is my voice. This is the cadence. It goes this high. It goes this low. And it stays the same. I don't have, he called it like special talents. I don't have any special talents. I do, by the way, although have one, is I am the Guinness Book of Records world record holder for eating goldfish uh, snack crackers in one minute. Beat your youth pastor, Zach. Thank you. Nobody has eaten more goldfish snack crackers than me. That's what I'm trying to say. It's an accomplishment. And if you say you have, then you're lying. Um, okay, we're going to press on. So that was Justin's message. Seth's message was about how to surround yourself with good friends, good people, godly people. Both those messages, super upbeat, super positive. Loved both those messages. My message today, it's not really that. Um, am I, do I really wish I had those other messages? I don't know. We're going to figure it out. But my message is on what to do when it is time to unfriend somebody. So we've kind of hit this peak of like we've learned how to be a good friend. We've now chosen the right friends, we hope. And now we need to learn what happens when it's time to kind of let friendships go. So I was thinking back to my youth, my teenage high school years. And I found that I had a ton of different friends for like a ton of different seasons in my life. Depending on what I was going through, um, I had friends in different times of my lives. And as I got older, those friendships started to kind of naturally just drift apart. And I'm not trying to say that you lose all your friends when you become an adult. Um, what I'm trying to say thing, is things change, people change, friendships inevitably do change. Look. I'm a grown man. I'm 33 years old. I have a wife. I have three kids. What's up, Kenna? 
and uh, I don't get out much, okay? So uh, I'm busy. We're busy people. If I was to tell my wife, Caitlin, like, hey, I'm going to go over to my friend Matt's house this weekend. We're going to play Warzone and Madden all night. I'm pretty sure I'd be sharing the couch with my dog over the next week or so. So if you don't get out much as an adult, maybe some of you will. Uh, good for you if you do. But back to our topic at hand. We're going to talk about what happens when friendships come to an end, okay? It's something that all of us are experiencing probably right now for many different reasons. It can be an organic kind of reason, like maybe you have a friend that's moved. There's really no control over that. Maybe you have a friend who was in your sport or in your chess club or in whatever you do, and they're no longer in that program. So you kind of just naturally drift away. I'm sure we've all had those friendships. And then we have friendships that aren't so easily explained on why they drift apart, or maybe the reasoning isn't always the greatest reasoning. Maybe, maybe you had a friend and you saw that they were not going down the right path. Maybe you tried to help them, you tried to reach out to them, you tried to be that good friend that Justin spoke about, but it wasn't working, and so you drew a healthy boundary and you decided it wasn't okay to continue that friendship. Maybe you had an argument. Maybe you and a friend got into a fight and you had a hard boundary. It was a hard argument. It was an argument that was so bad that you just couldn't come back from. So because you drew that line in the sand or they drew that line in the sand, the friendship inevitably just ends. And that is what brings us to today's message. My friends, if you have your Bibles, we are in Acts 15, verses 36 through 41. And we are talking about two best friends in the Bible named Paul and Barnabas. Now, we all know Paul. He was an apostle. Raise your hand if you know what an apostle is. If you don't, an apostle is a famous, not famous, is a, is a Christian missionary teacher, okay? They are very, very important people. They go around preaching the word, converting people to Christianity. It was a really, really big deal. Paul is kind of like the OG of apostles, right? He's like the Michael Jordan of apostles. That's how you can kind of view him. He's a very important dude. He's our first character. Our second is a guy by the name of Barnabas. Uh, Barnabas is also an apostle, like Paul, and his name actually means son of encouragement. And if you remember that, it's going to come into play a little bit later in the story. So Barnabas is in Jerusalem. That's where him and Paul meet. And Paul meets him. He hears about this guy, Barnabas. He's doing something kind of strange. He's selling all of his land and all of his property to the community. Barnabas is after that mission life, and he wants to basically sell everything off and go preach the word to God. Paul loves that. He's about the same thing. So you know when you meet somebody and you guys just click? That's ex thank you. That's exactly what happened here. They clicked. They were instant best friends. They were, they were brothers. So what do they do? They decide to go on a mission trip. It's actually one of the first mission trips ever recorded in history. So they travel. They, <clears throat> sorry, they planted churches through the island of Cyprus and into the province of Asia. Now, I want to touch on that for a second because we just heard about our mission team that is traveling to Mexico. And this story has a lot of mission in it. So our mission team is traveling to Mexico. I believe they're flying to Phoenix and Phoenix to like Puerto Vallarta. And then they're busing into that village. I don't know if I have that right or not, but something like that. But if you can imagine, even though it's a very stressful time to travel that way, nobody likes flying. Nobody likes jumping on buses. These guys, John, I mean, these guys, Paul and Barnabas, they were taking wooden boats. They were traveling in probably not so great weather. They were probably dealing with people that did not want them there at, to some degree. It was dangerous. It was hard. And imagine the bond that the two of them built. If you've ever been through something with somebody, you're just in the thick of it with someone, and you build a bond. And, and that bond that they had, I imagine, was really, really tight. They had to go through so much adversity to preach the word of the Lord. So, as the story goes, they're pretty good at what they do. They're planting churches, they're doing God's work, but they need 
some help. And this is where our third character enters. His name is John Mark. Now, John Mark, some of you may know, he is another apostle, third apostle. He is actually Barnabas's cousin. Okay? So Barnabas says, hey, we're super busy. This is kind of dangerous. We need a third guy. That would be awesome. I've got this guy. He's my cousin. He's also an apostle. Why doesn't he come on as like an assistant for us? I like to think of it as like bringing your little cousin to like your buddy's pickup football game. It's like you can come because we need the bodies, but it's like you're not getting any touchdowns today. So John Mark comes and and they end up missioning together, and they're going through, they're traveling, they're putting in the work, but something happens. Halfway through their mission, John Mark bails. He just leaves, and it doesn't exactly say why he left the mission, but based upon context clues, we just know that he went home to Jerusalem, so it's safe to assume that he was homesick and like wanted his mom's like spaghetti, and he just wanted to bounce. So he leaves, and he leaves Paul and Barnabas hanging. Now, as you can imagine, they're probably not super stoked about that. You've got Paul who is setting this whole thing up. He has this reputation. He is super good at what he does. And you have Barnabas who, that's his cousin, his own cousin who he vouched for, by the way, just leaves for no reason. They're only halfway through the mission. They have to now pick up the slack. And in thinking about this, it made me think, has anyone ever done a group project? Raise your hand. School projects? I'm sure pretty much everyone here has, right? And some of you may know where I'm going. Has anyone ever been in a group project and somebody isn't quite pulling their weight? Raise your hand. Yes. Okay. Has anybody been in a group project and somebody bails? That's more hands than I thought. Okay. That is had to be kind of, imagine how that made you feel, and that was kind of how these guys were feeling, right? Except on a huge level, not that your projects aren't, but like, think about how it made you feel if you were the one putting in, bless you, putting in that extra work and extra time to get that project done, and this person who just gets to have the credit doesn't actually put in the work, and I feel like these two really felt that way. They felt so just terrible that John Mark just up and left them. So let's fast forward to the future a little bit, a couple years down the road. Paul and Barnabas, they are still doing their thing. They're now living in a place called Antioch. And they're preaching the word there. And it's going really good. There's a few trifles and stuff like that, normal, normal mission stuff. But they're preaching the word when Paul and Barnabas are there. Barnabas suggests to Paul that they should go revisit the churches that they planted on their mission trip and see how they're doing. We'll see that now in verse 36. It says, Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. So, they're like, great, let's set this up. I think this is going to be like an awesome victory tour, like a quality control tour. We can go see what the churches are up to. And everything sounds hunky-dory, but there is one problem. Barnabas suggests to Paul that they bring John Mark along. Now, Paul, I imagine, is pretty salty still. And I know he's pretty salty still because an argument ensues. We're going to see that right now in Acts 15, 38, where it says, But Paul did not think it wise to take him because he deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. So Paul didn't want him to go. Paul, and I, I tend to agree with Paul. That would be me in this case. He'd be like, this guy's not coming along. He bailed. I'm not bringing him back on our victory tour. But Barnabas, if you remember, I said he was the son of encouragement. That's what his name meant. And he shows encouragement. He shows grace. He shows forgiveness to his cousin who betrayed him and still wants to bring him along. So what happens here? Paul draws a hard line in the sand. We spoke about hard lines with friendships. John Mark's not coming. Barnabas draws his own line in the sand. He's not backing down. 
He wants his cousin to go. He feels that his cousin deserves to go. Now, I bring you back to that reference of the group project. How would you guys all feel if somebody bailed on you and then they still get the A, right? Doesn't feel too good. Not good. So, but remember that Paul and Barnabas have been through a lot together, right? So you wouldn't think that something this simple would cause such a riff in their friendship. They've been in the thick of it for years at this point now, and Barnabas just wants his cousin to come along. You would think that it would be an issue that they can work out together, but as it turns out, they don't, and we're going to see that right now. In verse 39, it says, They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, continuing in 40. But Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. He went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Okay, so that's the story, guys. They left. One of them took John Mark. That was Barnabas. He says, I'm going to grab my cousin. We're dipping. Paul's like, fine, I'll choose this guy Silas, and we'll go this way. Now, through researching, through asking people much smarter than me, there is actually no story. There's, there's, no, there's no verse. There's nothing in the Bible that says that these guys come back together. That's it. This friendship that was built on this beautiful thing is over. And at first, that really bummed me out. Um, I was hoping that, you know, it would be some like storybook movie ending where they like, they end up meeting up at a random church and they're like, oh, I love you. Then they like hug each other and everything's fine. And that just quite frankly doesn't happen. But that's not the message of this story. The message here is not about reconciliation. So if it's not about reconciliation, what can we take away from this? Paul and Barnabas were two guys who understood the power of showing grace, overlooking offenses, and moving forward. And what I'd like to say is if you can make peace in an argument, you need to try. But if you can't, you need to have boundaries. And guys, that is so important for all of you guys to understand it is okay to have healthy boundaries. When you are in a friendship with someone and they're not respecting your lines, it's time to move on. Having healthy boundaries will help you navigate who you choose and who you choose not to be friends with. And that's exactly what Paul and Barnabas did. They had their boundaries. And the argument sounds small and it sounds petty. They're arguing about bringing some guy back for a victory tour on a mission that technically he was there for half of it anyways. But for them, it was a really big deal. Such a big deal. And you consider how much they went through. It was big enough for them just to totally end their friendship. But what I love about this story is that even though their friendship is over, it doesn't end in conflict. Think about it. They could have let this conflict and their friendship stop them from their mission work, but they didn't. They could have not gone out on mission and just talked trash on one another and stopped talking about Jesus, but they didn't. Their friendship ended, but they didn't let it end the mission that they shared. And here's what you can take away from this. Being a friend means walking away friendly. That's the bottom line. So how do we walk away friendly? Even in moments when you don't feel like it or think it's fair, because that's hard, right? Everybody is always their, their best cheerleader, right? Everybody's like, I was wronged. It was me. He's crazy. She's crazy. I was in the wrong here. They're awful people. That isn't always the case. And even if it is, we need to start with one simple word. And that word, guys, is forgiveness. Who asked us to forgive? Jesus. Jesus asked us to forgive. We are called as young men and women and grown men and women, we are called to forgive. And if we're going to choose to forgive, we can start this way. First thing is you need to identify why you're frustrated. What is your role in this argument? What is it that you are bringing to the table that's causing this friendship to get in such a riff? 
The second thing you need to do is you need to cancel their offense. It's something else we're called to do with, as Christians. It's right along the lines of forgiveness, to forgive and to cancel the other friend or previous friend's offense against you. Peter, another person who helped start the early church, says this in 1 Peter 3, 8 through 9. He says, Finally, all of you should be of one mind, sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters, be tenderhearted and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, there we are. Pay them back with a blessing. Now, that is a huge couple of verses right there. And it's something that we can all really, really sit down and unpack. But if I want to break down a few key words that Peter was saying when it comes to friendships and it comes to people not being so friendly with you, he says a few things. He says, sympathize, love each other, be tender hearted and humble. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. You don't have to continue to be friends, but that doesn't mean you have to become enemies. It is challenging. It's much easier just to write somebody off and consider them a terrible person. But the work is worth it. So being a friend means walking away friendly. It won't be easy, but the person who benefits the most is you. And that is a fact. If you can learn to have boundaries and when those boundaries get crossed to walk away friendly, you will be better for it. I promise you every time. So when you guys head to small groups this morning, I want you to think about your response to this question. What feelings come up when you think about changes to your friendships, your current friendships or past friendships? I'm going to pray and then we're going to get out of here. Lord, you are good in all that you do. We know you have a plan for us through good times and bad times. I pray that you watch over the friendships of every person in this room, Lord. I pray that you give them wisdom as they navigate through their friendships, Father. As always, bless this time of small group fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it, guys. That's it.